Hello everybody, I am Valerie Sayer of Nutrition Connection Balance and today we're going to go over the right supplements. I decided I wanted to redo this lecture. It's been a while, about four years since I updated it and it seems like everything comes in circles. You know, when something goes out of style, something new comes in or people after three to five years seem to forget some of the things that I've taught them, especially when they're my patients or going to high level lectures. So I think this will help a lot because there's a lot of concerns I have. So um, one, I am a registered dietitian. I'm also a licensed dietitian nutritionist. I'm a specialist in medical nutrition therapy and a hormonal therapist. I um, ran a compounding pharmacy for um, many years in Illinois, and then I did a medical internship for medical nutrition therapy in the Cleveland Clinic. My degree is food and nutrition science. I'm a certified medical exercise specialist. I'm a Reiki master. I've done two natural bodybuilding shows, three marathons, many races and other smaller things, all those after my kids were born. I'm a mom of five, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm an international marketing director. One of the things I just wanna say is be very careful where you get advice from. So think about what you specialize in what you know. I don't care if you're a plumber, if you are a PhD biochemist, if you're someone that runs a certain business, or again, someone just getting your foot into a new profession, or even just a job, you know, at a, a Pizza Hut or anything, that you want to make sure, think about, could I come in and do your job? So be careful. It's interesting with nutrition advice and supplementation, how people don't ask the right person the right question. So you always want to be looking at, one, where is their education and their experience? I have five years of advanced education, a bachelor's degree in food and nutrition science, and a medical internship. I've had over 18,000 patients just since my private practice since 2005, and then obviously I've had a lot of patients before then. Um, just since the, the reason I like to quote that is because it's, I've been able to track things in my own practice, and we also track things in the pharmacy from 2002 until 2005, so I have a lot of data from that also. Um, you want to uh, find out, are they a licensed dietitian nutritionist? Each state has its law. Registered dietitian is the highest because you have to do a minimum of four to six years and an internship. And then you have to do 75 continuing education hours and continue to stay updated <clears throat> and so on. Um, I have advanced exercise. I'm a registered dietitian, um, registered pharmacy technician license. I keep up my pharmacy license just because it keeps me up to date, even though I don't run a pharmacy anymore. And of course, a lot of times people need medication or are on medications. So it's important to know with herbal interactions and other things. I mean, I'm an author um, of a book, um, Eight Ways to Lose Your Blubber. I have an audio CD and many, many video, video presentations. And now I believe there's going to be nine that will be on my website all within the last year that's updated so that you can go to my website, nutritionconnectionbalance.com under education and watch them, share them with clients so that you really get the best updates. So why this particular lecture? Well, one, people are ordering stuff from the internet and it is a big problem. There's contamination, food poisoning, toxins, steroids, pharmaceutical ingredients, marketing, Everything is about the marketing and creating an emotion so that you want to have an outcome or you want to fix how you feel or fix how you look. With education, we know that um, it's important because over 50% of all adults take dietary supplements. Uh, the level and health risks are important because of hair tissue test, testing that I've seen, hormonal testing, environmental tests, where I see toxins, poisons, contaminants, and it's amazing People think it's a random event. It is absolutely not. It is absolutely affecting your health. When I just did my most recent hair tissue medical analysis, I put this up. This is in my waiting room where I always just put up new articles. These were just four within one month of toxins in blood pressure medical, uh, pills, uh, arsenic in baby food, uh, Zantac having all sorts of carcinogens, and so on and so forth. So it's, you know, it's not something that's just a little bit. It is absolutely a big problem. So I want to make sure you know the reasons we're having this lecture and why you want to make sure you get things that are from a health professional with 10 different rules around each supplement. One of the things that they showed this last year, and now it's already 2018 in uh, Journal of American Medical Association, is they found active pharmaceuticals, especially sexual enhancement medications and weight loss and certain pharmaceuticals and weight loss uh, medications. And even after FDA warnings, nothing was pulled from the shelf. There's hundreds. I could give you one example. And again, I'm not for any one brand. I'm just picking one thing that you could look yourself. But Silver Bullet was an example that actually contained Viagra. And sometimes people say, "Whoa, I got Viagra for a cheaper price. But no, Viagra interacts with medications. 
So if you don't know you're taking that and you have a heart condition, certain heart medication, then it's a major problem. So you wanna be very careful again. So January 2019 to June 2019, just as an example, there were many, many recalls. 29% had microbial contamination, which also could include food poisoning. 21% had mislabeled, which means there was incorrect amount of ingredients in there or even omitted amounts or even the wrong milligram. 14% had unlabeled allergens and 162 other recalls. And you could just imagine as we keep looking at that, how big that is. So when we look at Garden of Life in 2000, uh, January 2016, I only bring this up because people are always bringing me smoothies and shakes and think they're doing really well, especially when they do plant-based. I am very, very picky for a medical reason. Here's part of the reason. One, there is no proof that this particularly affects um, you know, anybody. And then also the other issue is that when we're looking at this, you know, we want to make sure that you're not getting contamination. If something's not tested after it's manufactured, I don't care if you go to a health food store. I don't care if you spend $20 or $100. It doesn't mean it's clean. 2000, October 2015, supplements were back on the shelf within one year of being banned. They were recalled doing, again, due to containing prescription drug ingredients. Most people take dietary supplements because they want to be healthier. They want to prevent disease. They don't want the side effects from the medications or they're not working effectively and they're trying to use both. So we want supplements that have proof that have health effects. More than 60% still contain banned drugs, according to the Journal of American Medical Association. How about this? 2015 in February, the New York Attorney General had ordered Walmart, GNC, Target, and Walgreens to stop selling certain herbal supplements because it didn't contain the herb ingredient on the label, even in small amounts. December 6, 2007. And I can go back. I can just give you thousands. I keep a notebook actually in the office, and now I'm starting to keep it, of course, electronically. But we show that, again, to, by 2007, there was 25% steroid contamination in supplements. 2007, 11% contained stimulants, which again can affect medication, heart rate, high blood pressure, all these different things. And then of course, there's intentional contamination by companies to make you addicted, to make you want to have it, that type of thing, or to have an outcome, cross-contamination during manufacturing, and then contaminated raw material. So just because it starts organic doesn't mean anything to me. I wanna know after it's gone from the field to the truck, to the manufacturing plant and then bottled, then out to you, the consumer, does it have any contaminants, pesticides, herbicides? So do not be fooled by the word organic. It means nothing when things have been processed. So let's talk about how to evaluate. So, so, so now that you know how important it is, right? And I can just give you case after case. Let's talk about how to evaluate a supplement. What things are things that I recommend that are proven and what things are out there? So we know that there's certainly vitamins and minerals. There's two types of vitamins, water-soluble and fat-soluble. Minerals affect how the bones and the teeth and are formed and things get in and out. Fluids in and out of the tissue and food into energy and other forms that we need. They're all part of the metabolic processes. And whether you're talking about neurons or the different neurotransmitters, or if we're talking about the heart, nervous and muscle system, or if we're talking about the ATP system for an athlete. Trace minerals are smaller amounts, especially things like iodine. And iodine is extremely important, but if you take it and you don't need it, or if you take too much and you have a thyroid autoimmune condition, then you actually hurt yourself more. So again, it's a very, very detailed science. How about multivitamins? When Iowa Women's Health Study published at the University of Minnesota showed women at 62 years or older died earlier if they took a multivitamin. And that include almost every individual item, whether it had iron or folic acid. 160,000 postmenopausal women who took multivitamins did not prevent cancer, heart disease, or strokes. Why do we take dietary supplements? To either help a symptom or to prevent disease. So again, I have never, just so you know, recommended a multivitamin ever. I believe in individually testing and individually giving you things that match your body. Because why would my husband, myself, and our children all be the same? What about men? National Cancer Institute, Journal of American Medical Association, looked at 35,000 men 55 years and older. And they, this is a long-term study. Vitamin E increased prostate cancer by 17%, and vitamin E and selenium increased the risk even more. 
So I just want to make sure you know why I'm going over the things, why I'm very specific on what I'd recommend as foundational, and then how to individualize beyond there. What about B vitamins? Everybody talks about B vitamins because the number one condition that I hear for anybody, any age, is that they're tired. So when we look at B vitamins, they're touted to increase energy. Well, prove to me that they're low. First of all, they showed that B combination, complex combinations, increase cardiovascular disease and increased incident of mortality and cancer. So we wonder why all these healthy people that try to take good care of themselves, still we have a higher incident of cancer than other countries. These are part of the reasons. What about exercisers? Advanced exercisers need a lot more antioxidants, but not in individual isolated nutrients. What we're showing, and this has been now going on for four, about five years definitively, that when you take extra E and C, it actually blocks free radicals, but it promotes insulin sensitivity. So what happens is when you exercise, there's this benefit of increasing insulin sensitivity. So you lower your risk of diabetes, you metabolize carbohydrates better. But here, one of the problem is, is when you eat your fruits and vegetables, you know, or juice plus and the berries, not isolated vitamins, it doesn't interfere with the insulin part of digestion. And the insulin part of our hormonal systems are very important as we get older because it affects body fat. Body fat affects disease. It affects diabetes risk. It affects high blood pressure and metabolic syndrome. So it's also very important for athletes. A lot of my endurance athletes, my cyclists, my soccer players that I see use very high dose E and C and those kind of things um, have the highest cancer rate in my practice because they've been on these very high doses because someone told them to in their group. So again, we want to be smarter than that. So we want to make sure we do not forget about food. So I will mention this. We're not going to, this is not a food lecture. This is a dietary supplement lecture in the rules, but it's important to know it's constantly telling your body how to function and your genes respond to your environment, come from your diet, lifestyle, and, and, and your diet. Genes are the loaded gun, but the environment pulls the trigger. So be very careful that we do not forget that a foundational diet is very important to continue to improve and improve, especially plant-based foods. Why? Here's just a few. Here's some fruit facts. I love that, fruit facts, right? Half a million people followed for seven years. 12% less chance of developing diabetes by two fruits a day. Two fruits a day, 17% chance of dying from any cause with three fruits a day. So hello, again, we know plant foods are important. So let's talk about the rules for supplements and I'll weave in some other studies. But um, I used to always have eight, I have 10 now. And that's changed in the last four years. They are bi be bioavailable, that means when you swallow them, are they absorbed? Are they peer reviewed in a medical journal? Are there human studies? Is the quality control purity? Is there a form that is the right form that our body metabolizes better? Is there independent testing? Is there, uh, the ingredients on the labels, not missing things, not unnecessary things you don't need, and then certainly no fake things. Sustainable practices, doesn't do any harm, and individual has individual changes and improvement with that supplement. And we'll talk about each one of these. So bioavailable and peer reviewed, is it absorbed in the bloodstream? Did it change anything? Who says it's absorbed? So we wanna make sure it's not my opinion that it's absorbed. When I used to work next to a radiologist, he used to show me pictures of pills sitting in the lungs, holes in the digestive tract. It was incredible. So you absolutely wanna know that when you swallow it as a human being, is it absorbed so that it goes and does the work that it needs to do? Quality control and purity. Are the supplements tested after manufacturing? We want the least amount of toxins, I mentioned this. Why do I say least? Because there can't be zero. And anyone that tells you that is not telling the truth because there are micro amounts, or even when we say gluten-free, there are certain parts per million that can get in. So we want the least amount of toxins. When we talk about different oils, you can't have zero. So it's very important to look at the facts. And then of course you want good manufacturing practices, which usually I don't even talk about this anymore. Pretty much everyone has to have this, which just means they have a system and a clean processing. Does it have third-party testing? That means after it went, remember, from that field to that manufacturing plant, to that bottling plant, to the consumer, was it tested afterwards? NSF is the highest. That National Sanitation Foundation is the very highest rating because it goes in. It's an unbiased type of thing. They can test anyone after. And then there's even a sport one for Olympic athletes or someone that's depending on a scholarship. So then you might want that certification. In my opinion, the NSF standard is plenty. You don't have to pay for the sport one. 
Consumer Labs is a good place that looks at things, but it only looks at three criteria. If it had the ingredients, okay, in it, and then if it had certain toxins, it does not have the other rules. So it's still just the first part of looking at a dietary supplement. And then there's a Nutrisorts Diagnostic Labs that also look at things. So the form is very important. In other words, what is the form of vitamin D? We do not want the 50,000 jacked up and up and down. That is the only prescription available. We want the colocociferol. And this is where it is different. We want a different form than the ergocociferol because the natural form actually can cause some problems with thyroid and interact with other hormones. So the form of vitamin D is important as an example. Omega-3s, you want the triglyceride, not the ethyl ester form when we're talking about an omega-3 fatty acid from seafood. Now, if we're talking about algae, that's different. But if we're talking from the fish, not plant-based, then it's important that it's the triglyceride form, not the ethyl ester. And we're not talking about triglycerides in the blood like a cholesterol panel. We're talking about the molecular structure. If you have the wrong form, it increases LDL and all sorts of other problems also in even brain and moods. Juice Plus and Vineyard Blend. It's really just called Juice Plus now, fruits, vegetables, and berries. It is a food label. It has a nutrition facts label, not a dietary supplement label. So in my opinion, we want food forms as much as possible. We want a triglyceride or a plant-based algae form for the omegas, and we want the colocociferol for the vitamin D, because that is the foundation for every adult, infant, and child I've ever worked with. Does it have label and unnecessary ingredients? In other words, is it nutrition facts or dietary supplement facts? A lot of times when people tell they're taking whole food supplements, and there's many companies that tout that, that if you look at the back, if it doesn't say nutrition facts, it is not a food. It may add food parts, but it is not the whole food. Are there dyes? Are there additives? Can you pronounce it? What's the source, the form? And that's important because in food science, my degree is food and nutrition science, there are certain manufacturing things that you have to do when you take something like even a fruit or vegetable and you break it down into a powder. It can't, it, you have to prevent mold, you have to prevent sticking, it, that type of thing. So you have, always have to ask if there's an ingredient in it that you don't like. For some reason, I always pick magnesium stearate because sometimes the raw food, raw food, raw food community um, mention that one. I say, what's the source? If that source is a blueberry, then that magnesium stearate is a particular source that your body can use. So you wanna understand why the ingredient's also in the supplement, and then there's a food science and stability issue with every single thing that's broken down. Does it have sustainable packaging and practicing? Does it package? Do they, does the company care about the environment? Use less packaging. A lot of times a company, even like one of the ones that I use with Juice Plus, one of the most beautiful things is they package it a certain way, not for sales, but to save on plastic to save on trees, to save on all these things that is huge in the big, large impact. Do we try to protect the earth? What about habitat protection, overfishing, overharvesting? Okay. We want the Hippocratic Oath with this do no harm. If you read the original one, it's amazing. You will cry. It is one of the most beautiful things that we have gotten so far from it in the United States with medicine, that you've got to be an advocate for yourself first and use traditional medicine, surgery, prescriptions when it's absolutely medically necessary, and there are absolutely times when it's appropriate and necessary. And then the modern version is also nice. I would absolutely, I don't read it anymore because I can't read it without crying. So you guys can Google it and read it. I would highly encourage you to read what medicine is supposed to be about. Is it the wrong sources? A oh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia, anyone can go in and change anything. It is not a reputable source. I am amazed when someone comes to me, especially when they have advanced education and they say, well, I read on Wikipedia. I'm like, I don't care. I don't even want to hear the rest of the sentence. A PDR, a PDR, a physician's, desk a physician's Desk Reference, is the company pays to be in there. What does that have to do with, is it helpful in a human? Is it bioavailable? Absolutely nothing. Well-meaning friends, and sometimes friends do know, that's where word of mouth and grassroots is really helpful, but still want to make sure it's the right thing. Magazines, oh my gosh, magazines, internet, health food, por food uh, personnel. I, when I first moved to Illinois from Ohio, I used to go into the GNC here because I was just starting and um, yeah, I hadn't worked in the pharmacy yet. And I had to find a place and I could only find one thing I could buy there, one thing. And when you listen to people, it was shocking what they would say and how people would buy $400 worth of stuff for blood pressure, for different things and absolutely inaccurate, wrong, or actually dangerous. 
So you really want to make sure you deal with someone that has a medical background, not reading a monograph in the back that that's the daily monthly special and they give them something to read and repeat. USP, United States Pharmacopeia. It contains the ingredients on the bottle, does not contain harmful ingredients. It's FDA and GMP looked at, but it doesn't mean that it's absorbed. It doesn't mean there's human studies. It doesn't mean it's effective, and it has nothing to do with will it prevent a disease, have a health effect, or side effect. So again, it is an important one to know about. At least it's something, but it is not enough. Because, you know, we're all going to drink something like beer, you know, hopefully not a, a square with a straw, but, you know, we're never going to eat perfectly. We're not going to do the perfect things. So I've always been an advocate of foundational supplementation, even more so when I got my degree and I was looking at studies and testing myself and I couldn't believe how many deficiencies I had, as well as everyone I've ever tested without supplementation. I just think that our environment, our food, the way we grew up, our stress, just doesn't allow us, unfortunately, to just get it through natural things. And then again, then we might have too many beers, you know? So optimal sub supplementation is a general nutrition foundation, pick the best product, individualized through testing, family history, diet, and symptoms, and now I also say genetics. Base dietary supplement can absolutely change or even save your life. So let's talk about Juice Plus. So Juice Plus is 30 different fruits and vegetables. It's been around for over 25 years. It has over 38 medical studies. It meets every rule. I have used it clinically since 2002. This is what you should be on in the capsules or chewable form. The chewables like a gummy. You can chew them and have to take four, four, and four, or the capsules are two, two, and two. You can also open the capsules if you don't like that into your smoothie, or you can also swallow them, or you can take the chewable. Okay, so you can't get any easier than that. So Juice Plus, let's run it through. Is it bioavailable? Yes. Is it peer reviewed? Yes. 30 plus, 38 studies now. Human studies? Yes. Does it have quality control? Yes. It's tested after. Does it, is it a food form? Yes. What is the form? It's not like we don't know. It is food. It has independent testing, the NSF and the NSF sport, if someone is worried as an Olympian or really, really nervous about contaminants. Does the label have unnecessary ingredients? No. Are there sustainable practices? Yes. Does it do any harm? No, it has health effects, not side effects. And I have seen individual changes in lab work in actual parameters like inflammatory markers, interleukin numbers, um, lipid numbers, LPA sizes, homocysteine, but I've also seen subjective changes which are also important for quality of life. So Juice Plus has thousands of studies I'm sorry, um, all different types of thousands of people that have taken Juice Plus. Over a million children have been on Juice Plus with, um, in the family health study. And we know that it has multiple different medical systems like cardiovascular disease, inflammatory disease, quality of life, lipids, health in the lung, the skin, the gums, the immune system, the healthy DNA, reducing oxidative stress, and absorbed by the body. So I love Dr. Du Bois, what he says is there's nothing else any place in the world with or without a prescription that is clinically proved to do what Juice Plus is proven to do. And yet when I talk to people, 3% of the United States know about it. We have got to do better. So absolutely, you know, call our office, get on the Juice Plus, or if you're interested in sharing it, let me know. You want to again, does it have the gold standard research that is randomized, double blind, placebo controlled, tested on the product itself? In other words, it's not with a combination. It's actually me swallowing that juice plus pill, testing my blood, then it's published in a medical journal, and then is it ethical? So does it do no harm? So it has all these different universities and different countries that have studied it and continue to study it. There's a few more studies can be published in 2020. You also want to think about growing your own food. It's a way to make sure you're not getting pesticides and herbicides. The Tower Garden is fantastic. I have the Tower Garden Flex in my office all year round with lights. I used to have it outside, but I got so mad when I found out that almost every seed that you buy or organic food that you buy in the grocery store is a genetically modified seed. And then also that about 26 hands touch your organic lettuce before you get it to the table. So I have the Home Tower Garden in Florida, and then I have the flex that's a little bigger in my office. It's 98% less water, 90% less space, 30% more yield, three times faster and safe and nutritious. And the University of Mississippi did a study where they looked at soil garden and they had huge improvement in the quality as well as the yield. So for anyone, I do not like growing food, I'm going to be honest, but 
you can get, it probably pays for itself in about two to six months for the Edge family, just in greens. And I've had mine, my Flex for six years, over six years now, and I just got my home tire guard a few months ago. So it pays for itself pretty quick, and it's water in the bottom, very easy. So again, if you have information, you need information, just contact your office. You can also go to my website, nutritionconnectionbalance.com. On the top right, there is a Juice Plus button. So one other thing I wanna mention, because when I'm looking at toxicities and problems, one of the beautiful things about Juice Plus is that it has, a, besides the bioavailability study, it had a reduction of inflammation markers, but increased the antioxidant enzyme called superoxidimutase. The SOD is a very important in detoxification. And since we're seeing people exposed to toxins from food, not just from environmental things now, but from food, particularly supplements, hair products, skin lotions. We wanna make sure that our pathways that are affecting detoxification are healthy in large amounts. And the Juice Plus has studies showing that that does increase. So all the genetic studies today, look at this enzyme. Are you a high um, absorber or a low absorber of toxicities? And you need a large amount. So Juice Plus is really great. I always say it is one of the most affordable things you'll ever do. You know, if you're on the shake, it's 233 a day, same with the bar. Or if you're getting the capsules or the omegas, you know, and or both, then it's 350 a day. You know, for most places, a coffee's four dollars. It's more than that here in Chicago. And you know, it's always about understanding the value. When I have people on a fixed income and they say can't they can't afford it, I have never ever had a patient, even living out of a car, that couldn't afford it. Because one, if they have everybody has to eat, you trade food dollars. We look at food bills and see what we can take out. People have cable, they do their nail, their hair, their hair. They have all sorts of things that they can do and change. And all they have to really do again is look at how to change that by making sure they know the value. So vitamin D, so vitamin D in particular is really great. So vitamin D is the second foundational thing you should take. It's a hormone. Adults need one to 2000 IUs without a blood test. With a blood test, it could be way more. But I recommend it daily, and sometimes I'll do five times a week for a certain reason, but it's very important to get on a regular basis. You don't want hormones going up and down. So you don't want high hormones and then not checked again, or very high hormones once a week or once a month. That will not work long term. Kids get 400 IUs or less, unless they're adult size, which is usually around 12 or above, then we give them 1,000 to 2,000. And again, preferably, I want a blood test, the 25-hydroxy D3. We can do a little finger spot test in our office, or you can ask your doctor to do it when they draw a serum test. No matter what, we want 50 to 100, and most people are 75 to 100 for what we want their level of vitamin D to be. D benefits why? It directly affects, reduces your risk of colon cancer by 50%. Circulating levels, especially if you have normal or ideal levels, again, at least up to 50 through the age of 20, reduces your risk of MS and it's the number one factor for bone health, and it directly stimulates serotonin, which is the feel-good neurotransmitter. And since depression is gonna be the leading cause of disability in the United States, I think it's darn important. What about food? First of all, I don't recommend dairy, but if I did, it's only 100 IUs. Sunshine is not enough. Half of all Hawaiian skateboarders, that means one of the most beautiful, sunniest places in the world, have 50% we're low in vitamin D. And those are the skateboarders. That means they're outside all the time. So the average calcium supplement only has 100 to 400. So everybody must supplement and I prefer it separate. There's the drops. You can get a 400 or a 2000 or we have an NCB red label, 1500. And it's a hormone. That's why I'm very picky about what we have you take, not just to get any brand anywhere. We want to make sure it's absorbed. We want to make sure you don't have contaminants. We had um, some drops, not from our office, but other companies that had lead poisoning in it. Vitamin K may be with special cases, especially fractured bones or some other types of blood clotting issues. But I rarely do that unless a patient really wants to because all my patients and my friends and family are on Juice Plus and the vitamin K from vegetables is plenty. So you can just take the D separate. Essential fatty acids are the third foundational important topic. EPA, eicosapentoic acid, and docasa hexoic acid is important. Those are the ones that affect prostaglandin hormones every single pathway. Alpha linoleic acid comes from other products, like food products, like flax and hemp and things like that, nuts and seeds. So how much you want to have one to 2,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA a day, 
and you want to see a professional with omega testing because you need anywhere between 1,000 and 6,000 in some cases. Some very unusual cases with high inflammatory disease, autoimmune, even need more than that. So again, I prefer to test, not just give you some. But if you won't, I will tell you what to get. So this is the omega test that we look at. I picked one that is pretty much the average American. That's someone that's eating pretty healthy. And that's where they show up on the omega index. And you're supposed to be 10 to 12 for prevention. And even now the FDA states that it's one of the biggest things that prevent all coronary heart disease and hypertension, which is blood pressure. So we want it way up to the 10 to 12%. And then this is one when we were looking at the report of my son when he was out of his fish oil for four months of school and he started developing some weird elbow problems and joint issues. And his omega-6 to 3 ratio and his acid level got, had gone from completely desirable to too high. And as soon as we got him on uh, his omegas again, he, they had sent him to school and they sat to where they were hot and they were rancid and he forgot to tell me. So we, we fixed that pretty quick. But again, most Americans, quite frankly, are actually way up here. So an acid turns on pain, autoimmune disease, cancers, and then omega-6 to 3 inflammatory conditions and other brain-related concerns. So the reason that I don't recommend that people only get plant-based alpha-linoleic acid and why every single person when I've tested has to take a dietary supplement for omegas is because most people can't convert that ALL to EPA and DHA. And the reason is there's an enzyme, a desaturase enzyme that has to be there. And as we get older, it, it, it's, its efficiency is less and also all prescription medications affect it. And also you would have to take 10 cap, cups of flax to equal to get the, the minimum amount of EPA and DHA. And so only about 5 to 10 percent and 2 to 5 percent of the main omega-3s, the EPA and DHA, are even absorbed if you had 10 cups of flax. So you can't eat your way there. And I have proven that to even my staunch vegans, vegetarians, and purists, that you must take an omega fatty acid. You do have choices, though. You can take things like the Nordic Naturals or the Juice Plus Omega, but it's very specific. They have an international um, a standard, and there's an NSF standard, which means it's tested afterwards for pesticides, herbicides, lead, things like that. Make sure, again, it's the right form. If it's a seafood base, the triglyceride, not the ethyl ester. Or if you don't want to do that, then you can take a plant-based omega that doesn't increase your 6 to 3 ratio. And the only one I found by testing is a juice plus omega. And then you still need at least four or more a day. If you're a vegan, raw foodist, or have a seafood allergy, or you want to stay 100% plant-based, you've got to take at least four a day. And again, I prefer to test. Then I could tell you, is it five? Is it six? And again, keep you out of the woods. Why is omegas important? Because it helps with mental conditions, depression, brain cell communication is enhanced, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, colon, cancer, certain cancers and breast treatment, breast, colon, prostate, multiple myeloma, chemotherapy response is better with omega-3 fatty acids. Alzheimer's disease could be reduced by 39% if the right omegas were given. The DART study showed that 29% had a lowered risk of a second heart event with, with at least that thousand omega uh, EPA and DHA, and 73% lower risk if you had no previous heart events. If you're on the right form, the right kind, the right brand, and then the right um, amount, hopefully individualized to your blood. Reduce the level of triglycerides without increasing LDL. So again, when you get the right omegas from algae or from seafood, the right form, the right kind, based on your blood work, usually triglycerides go down better than any medication, including a statin. Pregnancy. The minimum DHA in pregnancy is 300, which is ridiculous. Remember, I said the minimum is 1 to 2,000. Pregnant women and military people in the military have the lowest levels. That is crazy to me. First of all, we're, we're building a new human being. And second of all, the mom is doing double and triple time turning over cells. And then, of course, we know there's hormonal fluctuations that can cause depression and then postpartum depression. And then our military are the most stressed, the youngest, fittest people, and they have the lowest levels that would help them with inflammation, with all the sit-ups and the pull-ups and the field training and the stress. So for goodness sake, we have got to get them omega-3 fatty acids. Depressed mothers have a lower level of omega-3 levels. Increased omega-3 levels in the third trimester helps greatly. And again, babies' brains, uh, babies drain the mom. And we show over and over and over how important the EPA and DHA is to pregnancy, to moms and to the babies and neurological, uh, neurological development. 
What about the kids and women? 75% of women have improvements in PMS after two months. That was 1,000 milligrams, 1,080 exactly of EPA and DHA. As EPA levels go up, there's a 25% improvement in impulsivity and a de decrease in hyperactivity after 15 weeks. How about a 55% reduction in hot flashes? Again, around that 1,000. So do you see why with working with patients, testing patients without testing, I am positive, one to 2,000 with the Juice Plus Omega, or when we start dealing with the Nordic Pro Omega, it won't hurt you. I prefer you do my Omega Clinic, and I can tell you exactly what to taste, every single amount for your own body. One last thing, pain. You know, if you watch my pain and inflammation lecture and you have our unpaid medications or have chronic pain, please go to my website, nutritionconnectionbalance.com under education, previous episodes. Please, please watch that because this is a very small amount, but since we're the biggest 80% of pain prescription users in the US of the whole population, we also have the worst disease and the highest pain. It is not working. They showed less pain in 75 days with non-surgical back and neck conditions on one to 3,000 milligrams of fish oil. And it modulates inflammation, so we even know how it works. So you wanna either take Pro Omega two to four a day, two is the minimum thousand, if you have more inflammatory conditions, then take four a day, two with breakfast, two with dinner. Pro Omega D3, if you prefer, you want to get that one to 2,000 um, of D3 without testing, then you can order the Pro Omega D at our office and take two a day, one and one, or two in the morning, or two with breakfast, two with dinner. And you'll get the 2,000 milligrams of EPA, DHA, and D3 with the four a day. Pro EPA, Pro EPA Extra, Pro Omega CRP, all specialized based on my omega testing. Please don't get those if I don't know what your in omegas are and your inflammatory numbers. Juice Plus Omegas are a great plant-based blend of six different omegas from six different sources: algae, pomegranate seeds, sea buckthorn, raspberry, tomato, and safflower. They're sustainable, non-GMO, gluten-free, non-artificial, anything as well as vegan. So my plant-based vegans or anyone that has a seafood allergy or myself, I use a combination because there's a lot of research with some of the additional omegas in these foods that we can't eat a lot of like sea buckthorn berries. There's plant-based allergies on the market. I've never seen one with testing in a patient that it didn't hurt their omega levels and also did not get it up high enough. I think the reason this one works is not just the algae, but it also is the other essential fatty acids in there from other food forms. We know nature, nature makes it right. So it's really nice that for the first time ever, I can offer my vegans, my vegetarian, people that wanna do a combination like myself. I want my omega levels perfect, but I want the plant-based with the seafood base so I can have optimal omega levels and optimal health. So what happened why we can't just eat all of those omegas again is that we know when the introduction of the soybean as well as all the different processed foods, even Ezekiel bread and all these wonderful healthy foods, again, it's mainly omega-6s and that displaces our ratio. So the average person is about 33 to one for their omega-6s to omega-3s. We want you to eat the sixes, the nuts, the seeds, the whole grains, the unprocessed foods, unprocessed. But the problem is they're mainly omega-6s or that linoleic acid. So you've got to have the omega-3s from a dietary supplement or the juice plus omega from an algae source. Plant sources, I said, like flaxseed, chia seed, walnuts, fortified eggs, microalgae, brown algae. I want you to eat those foods. They're healthy plant-based foods, but you can't eat enough to get your omega fatty acids balance right. And I've never had a patient ever that has. And I have tested at least over 18,000 patients. So just so you know, it's something that I'm, um, it's very, very clear about. So do you need to stop medications or supplements if you have a car accident? And I bring this up because this is amazing, again, how myths happen and how a doctor learns one thing or a person and it's just passed on for 30 years with no evidence again. When we're in the medical field, we're supposed to use evidence-based medicine to make recommendations. And just like if you own a business, just like if you have a job, you use evidence to find is it working or it isn't. So when you have a car accident, do they say, well, we can't do surgery on you for your broken leg, even though you're bleeding to death because you, had, you were on a supplement? Of course not. So there are no contraindication and side effects of omega-3s. That is a misnomer. It is the medications that have the side effects, the Advil, the ibuprofen that cause bleeding time to increase. So the FDA has ruled up to three grams of EPA and DHA is safe. That is 3,000 milligrams. 
including warfarin, scheduled for surgery, and a recent German study showed up to nine grams had no interference whatsoever with bleeding time or repair. 2017, the FDA reviewed 52 studies. 30 people, 30 different studies show healthier platelet aggregation. That means how blood flowed, didn't clot too much, didn't clot too little, better. And 20 with surgery, it did not increase bleeding or blood transfusions during or after surgery, and therefore discontinuation of fish oil supplements prior to surgery is not recommended. They affect your health, they affect your inflammation. I've never stopped anything with any of my surgeries with myself or my family. And I just give people this information so that hopefully they can use it you know, when, um, when a doctor says to go off their fish oil. Doctor, I've never had a doctor that read this or see this that says, oh, okay. They just don't know. They just keep saying the same thing forever. Juice Plus Complete is one of my favorite powders. Why do I bring this up? Because I have taken a powder for since I was 15. I do believe in plant powders and as well as whey powders. The problem is the contamination is off the chart today. And they are some of the worst with the steroids, the caffeines, the epinephrine, the um, prescription-based things. And that includes even healthy plant powder. So the complete is one of my very favorites. Part of that is it's plant-based, gluten-free, dairy-free. It's got six different plant, pro plant proteins, which we know more and more are what affect our health. The glycemic index is low. So when someone says, oh my God, it's 20 grams of carb and I'm following the low carb diet or the keto diet, I said, no problem. You can still do this. Shake. It's got eight grams of fiber and the way that it jacks up your blood sugar is equal to broccoli. It's the glycemic index. And I have lots of type 1 diabetics with insulin pumps. We monitor. If they're doing two complete shakes a day in the Juice Plus, they use less insulin long term. So we know it works. Nutrition works. We want nutrient density. That means a lot of nutrition in a powder. And I do believe powders are also the reason I've taken them. And I'm 53 for so many years is because you want things that are fast without fast food. And you want a lot of nutrition. And I can also open all my Juice Plus capsules in it, so I love it. So it just makes swallowing and a regular routine easier. If I'm stuck at work, if I'm doing different things, I can do a shake and a shaker in 30 seconds. Okay, you can make it fancy with kale and berries and different things or from your tower garden, but remember, you don't have to. Okay. So the complete chase is the fastest meal you'll find. It can be emergency snack, emergency breakfast. My husband calls it the executive breakfast in his financial office because, you know, executives like a term. That's why people like the Shred 10 program. It's just saying take the capsules, the omegas, eat healthier, but we actually have menus and plans that can help you. But it's still, it's just the capsules, the shakes, and the omegas. It's something I've been doing since I was in my 20s, you know, based on science. You want the plant food, you want the energy, you want it water washed. The lowest cancer, the lowest heart rate, the lowest heart disease are with plant-based proteins. Two studies using the complete, it's all non-GMO ingredients, it has a nutrition facts label, it's dairy and gluten-free. So for goodness sake, get the complete shake order. All women, listen, high fiber diet in adolescence lowered breast cancer risk by 12 to 19%. And if you did it before menopause, 24% reduction in breast cancer. Everyone's afraid of breast cancer. So for goodness sake, why don't we do something about it? So we wanna eat more fruits and vegetables. People don't, you've got to take the, something like the Juice Plus and continue to eat better. The new Juice Plus Complete Bars, they're not really new anymore, but I still like to say it because most people don't know about them. You know, I see all these keto bars, all these other things. One third of people when they're on the ketogenic diet, when they get a lot of bars, they have palm oil in them, which increase their saturated fats, their palmitic acid and their trans fatty acid. So you get thinner and you create heart disease. That makes no sense to me. So you want a bar that has a low glycemic index, fiber again, we're supposed to have 25 to 35 grams of fiber a day. You can't do it by eating two salads. When I have my complete shake, when I have some berries, when I have my salad, when I have a bar, I've got 25 to 35 every single day. You gotta make it easy. The bars are non-GMO, water washed. There's a dark chocolate fig and a soy free. There's also even a soy free tart cherry. It is 100% vegan. What about individual herbs, vitamins, and minerals? You only want to take them if you have a deficiency, and that includes vitamins like B12. They'll say everyone after a certain age needs B12. That is not true. 40% of anyone I see did not need B12. You want your ideal level by blood to be 500 to 1,000, and you do need to check iron or the ferritin, not the iron and hematocrit. 
check your ferritin, your iron stores. Too high can indicate things like hemochromatosis or toxicity, or you might have very low ferritin as one of the main reasons your iron stores are causing you to be tired. So you wanna check your ferritin, that's when you need iron, but it's done differently. I don't do high doses, I do smaller micro doses so that you don't have any side effects and you actually turn over and repair your tissues and your red blood cells. Hair tissue analysis tells us a lot about all your minerals and if there's toxicities. There's a probiotic, sometimes I use. Again, the probiotic sheet is a two page sheet of research. I prefer you ask me what probiotic you should take because I'll ask you some questions so we can get you the best one for you. Each herb, whether you're using it for the lower blood pressure, whether you're using it to help with depression, whether you're using it for inflammation, has a certain part of the plant, milligram, and a possible interaction. You shouldn't just go buy a dietary supplement with an herb, and certainly not shakes. Shakes are the most dangerous with herbs. I have seen so many emergency room visit, weird heart palpitations, high blood pressure, and people bringing all these home, all these blood pressure cuffs and tests, and here it was just their herb they were taking, or a shake they were getting from somewhere. Ingredients can cause serious. I have so many of these, but just these are some of the things that are typically, you know, I think of a lot of patients that I see are always looking for less pain or looking for better athletic performance or sexual performance. And these are just an example when some of these ingredients are in things. Look at this, heart problems, possibly death, paralysis, breathing problems seizures, heart attack, rhythmias. I mean, again, please be careful. Please get someone that knows what they're doing with a dietary supplement. Ask how many patients do they see? Do they test? How long have they used things? I have over 500 companies in my office. I have to private label many things now because the company won't let me keep the same ingredients unless I private label it. So I don't do it for convenience. Believe me, it's the biggest pain in my butt, but I want people to make sure they have results and they don't have health effects. They have health Health, health effects, not side effects. So in summary, should you take a multivitamin and mineral? I hope you answer no after watching this lecture. And if not, you need to watch it again. Go slower. What should you take? Juice plus, omegas, whether it's a juice plus omega or the pro omega, vitamin D, whether it's the capsule or the drop. And then anything else should be through testing clinics. Go to my website, nutritionconnectionbalance.com. You want to learn more about pain and inflammation. You want to learn more about aging. You want to learn more about depression. You want to learn more about hormones. Under education tab are my lectures that I record just like this. You can use them. You can watch them over and over. Then you'll know what things you might need in addition to test. Our testing clinics we have every month from hormones to neurotransmitters to iodine to breast health. Um, so please get in a testing clinic. My number one clinic I recommend everybody get in is the Omega Clinic. Omega Clinic means you get registered, you do a finger prick test, it tells me an eight page report of your omegas. On the day of our clinic, you get a recording I do like this that's just for that clinic. You get an exact goal sheet with exact omegas that I recommend for you based on your test and your belief system, and then also handouts so that you learn so much. So please, before you take other things than exactly the amounts or what I have in this lecture, I would highly recommend that you see someone like me and get in a clinic. I do not take new patients anymore. And so please, please get in a testing clinic if you're gonna take anything outside of our vitamin D, our Pro Omega, our Juice Plus Omega, or the uh, Juice Plus, okay? I always um, appreciate referrals, but I especially appreciate grassroots. Um, please, you know, if you have a group that you want me to speak to, um, if you, um, it's made a difference to you, please share the, uh, this lecture and please share other lectures that are on my website with people you love and care about. All right, Nutrition Connection Balance and our staff truly appreciate you and I hope you find this helpful. I love feedback because it takes a lot of work to do these and really I do them just for um, to serve others and to make sure you're having the right education. So have a really wonderful and magical day. Take care.